Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy Friday schedule to come here to talk about my art. Um, before I get started, I'll do an overview. So I'm going to go over each painting and the whole exhibition's conceptual considerations. But before I do that, I would like to thank uh, my professors in the art department in digital studies and the digital learning team for inspiring this work. I'd also like to thank the gallery team for all their support. They've been so helpful over the past week. So coalescing realities um, is a visual exploration of two contemporary, re contemporary realities, the digital and the analog. Um, this is a visual exploration also of what I've dubbed the virtual subconscious, which is basically a collective digital awareness that we have now in the digital age. Um, so each piece has a QR connected to the label. The label and the title is actually HTML code. Um, so the eyes you're seeing at the beginning and the end of coalescing realities is HTML for italicizing. Um, and so that would be on the back end of a website and you would see italicized text on the front end of the website. So if you wanna follow along with each painting, you can navigate to my website, adelpatton.com, um, navigate to 2021 and then Coalescing Realities. I'll say each title of the painting and you can see on that page, the source imagery I've used for each painting. Um, so basically my process begins by experiencing my life and my experiences. Um, I've made digital collages for a few years now and each of these paintings you're about to see is inspired by digital collages. Um, and I've kind of started doing that before the pandemic, but I think the pandemic has helped me understand my work a little more now that we've shifted to a more technological state um, that allowed life to keep happening during the pandemic. And so with that, I'll get started sharing paintings. So this painting right here is called Surveillance Capitalism, which I think we've all kind of fallen prey to. Um, I've messed a picture I took of my siblings during a tornado warning in our basement in Concord. Um, they all, they brought their devices down to the basement thinking they'd have Wi-Fi to pass the time and the Wi-Fi didn't reach. So I decided to capture that. Um, and I've also meshed it, layered it with a picture of rhododendron uh, floating on water. And then for these cracks in Photoshop um, on the digital collage, I kind of just moved my finger. And with this piece in particular, I involve broken glass, which you can kind of see if you look at it from the side, um, because I want to involve the physicality of materials in my work. And there's another work that has string over top, which I'll get to. Um, yeah, we can move on to the next one. So this next piece is called Trackback. Trackback in the digital world is basically a link to some kind of online contents originating website. So I thought this piece in particular and the motion that, that I'm presenting in it um, captures this phenomenon pretty well. As you can see, I'm using lots of um, saturated colors a mix of oil and acrylic paints um, and pigment to do so, and visceral applications of paint. Um, and you'll see the blurry picture that's involved in this digital collage inspired painting is one that I took standing underneath the Eiffel Tower. Um, and I guess my camera was shaking while it was sparkling. So it captured this crazy um, composition. And I layered it with a picture I took driving around the countryside in New Mexico with my mom. And so you'll kind of see that input with this, with these green areas. Um, so overall, this is a inspired by blurriness, I guess. And 
these strips at the bottom to me represent the analog world um, because they're less saturated and they indicate our regular daily life. Okay, so this next piece is a triptych. I've titled it Internet of Things. It's called the Internet of Things. Um, the Internet of Things means it sort of means the physicality of the internet and the software that's being used to sort of enable the digital realm right now. Um, it also stresses interconnectivity. And so I've used these flat areas and this line connecting throughout each painting to allude to that interconnectivity. Um, the black lines on each painting is supposed to allude to like the Murray effect that we see when we try to take a picture of a screen. And lastly, when I was working on this, I realized that I think I was subconsciously thinking about my triplet identity and how we kind of have always had this group dynamic um, and we still do, but we're all a little bit separated now because of the pandemic and because of um, college. And the last thing about this triptych, I wanted to allude to the shape of a phone screen. So that's why I've, I've rounded the edges of these paintings on wood. This next piece is called Cascading Style Sheet. Cascading Style Sheet is a kind of coding language that determines how a website appears. Um, cascading, I just enjoyed the word because this um, is based on a picture I took of it, like an, a flooded stream. Um, so I think I thought that made sense. And then I really am drawn to the value changes that happen around this border and the sort of oversaturated color you see inside that kind of emphasize um, my representation of the virtual subconscious. I think it's also interesting to think about how the term window has been remediated because of the digital world. You know, a window 50 years ago was just a window on a house, but today a window can also mean like a Google search tab open on your computer. Um, while I was making to a podcast interview by or with Jade Fadid, British artist, and a quote stuck out to me, and I think particularly relevant to this painting, but to all of them as well. She said, looking at a painting is like looking through a window frame and seeing the reflection of yourself, the context in which you live, and the distorted fusion of the two. So I think that's exactly what I'm doing with each of these pieces. Um, I'm sharing my personal experiences by delving into my photo library, um, manip manipulating it in Photoshop and um, inverting colors to sort of convey the current moment. This next piece I've called dark patterns um, for obvious reasons with this dark input right here. Um, I use lots and lots of string and wrap the canvas around. So if you look at the back of it, there's just a complex web of, web of string back there. But I wanted to use that in conjunction with fluorescent lines of spray paint that you see right here to convey a cracked screen. So this is really just a landscape painting um, with a cracked screen over top. What you see on someone's phone. Now we can move on. And this last piece is called Dashboard. Um, a dashboard is basically a website's homepage. Um, I am using like oversaturation in the middle here in conjunction with neutral colors to make um, the natural world a little more apparent in this one. The digital collage that inspired this painting was made with an image I took of my art class. So you'll see some of the figures in here. 
on a trip to Max Patch, which is in Western North Carolina last year. So um, it's layered with that picture and also a picture I took hiking along a stream. And so you'll kind of get that suggested right here. And this is another example of my window making, I guess, uh, my portal to sort of um, represent the virtual subconscious and the coalescence of the digital and the analog. So thank you for coming. I'm happy to answer questions. I think it's really funny how each of these paintings um, I don't really view as abstract because the, paint, the pictures within them are so recognizable to me. So I'd love to answer any and all questions. Okay, the question is, what are the materials I've used in the last painting for, to convey the texture? Um, it's actually plaster and lots of applications of um, oil paint. And then if you look up close, you can see the interaction that happens between spray paint and water, which is sort of experimental and I tend to use that a lot in I've used them in each, that in each of my paintings, actually. What role does nature play in your work and its relationship to technology? Nature plays a huge role in my work. Um, I'm, I've been thinking about it a lot recently as, as we deal with climate change, but especially during the pandemic, I've used it as an escape. Um, so recently I've been escaping on hikes and walks in the woods um, to sort of cope with the current moment. Its relation to technology, I, I think nature has, escaping to nature has become more common among people because of social media. So I think there's an interesting relationship there and, and in the way nature is depicted um, with the overconsumption of visual culture. Could you talk about when you feel most inspired I feel most inspired, um, you know, after spending time in nature, but also after, you know, playing on my phone, making digital collages, of course. Um, and also after collaborating with people and hearing other artists talk like Jade Fado Jutani that I mentioned earlier. So um, listening to podcasts has been helpful recently. Could you talk more about your dark patterns? And uh, is that a reference to anything and uh, maybe uh, dark design patterns that certain companies use? Mm -hmm. um, so dark patterns is the second to last one right here. In the digital world, dark patterns refers to the kind of marketing strategies that big tech is using to um, advance capitalism, I guess. So. It's really manipulating user psychology to get them to buy more and engage more with a product. How about the black bars are reminiscent of taking pictures of a screen, but some of the bars are red and green in the left piece of the other one. Um, why did you change the colors for that section of that piece? Yeah. Um, I think as I was working on this, I wanted to involve or kind of trick the eye into seeing transparency. So that's where this, this green part is coming from and also right here. Um, but when I realized I was thinking of my triple identity, um, I wanted to sort of change these up a bit to not match or go along with the first one um, because I was thinking about my siblings and how different we are, so. I left this one a little bit more complicated, which I think <laughs> is reminiscent of, of me. <laughs> and going off of that, uh, why are these color choices uh, important for you in your work? I, I think I'm just visually drawn and interested in bright colors. And maybe that's a result of having grown into this digital age. Um, and having all of these screens around me starting from a young age. So that's just personal preference. And I think it does a good job of conveying what I want, want it to convey. Um, and could you describe the difference or similarities between the digital, digital collage process and the actual process of um, traditional painting in your practice? 
Sure. So digital collage making kind of happens sometimes when I when I'm bored or um, after I've taken pictures and experienced some kind of event in life. So um, I typically use the Photoshop Mix app and kind of what pictures and what pictures will create interesting compositions. Um, and in the Photoshop Mix app, I think the transparency changes to 50% between both of those pictures. So you can kind of see both at the same time. And then sometimes I'll invert the colors, um, which tends to reveal a, a darker side of the image, which I think relates to the dark side of the digital world. And then the painting process, I often view painting digital collages as a challenge. I think it's kind of like a puzzle um, and it's a fun challenge to take on to replicate digital collages using materials like oil paint, acrylic paint, spray paint, water, and pigment. Um, so it's the process of painting is, is just a lot of layering in a way it's and it's a fun process. It's kind of like cracking code. Um, and do your siblings um, and family influence much of your work? Have my siblings influenced much of my work? I think so because they've influenced me as a human being and my experiences, which obviously determine what I make. So um, also they're very supportive of my creative practice. And so I'm very thankful for them. Um, and there are photos of rhododendron that appear in multiple of your collages and paintings and uh, were they incidental or in intentional? Uh, I would say both because the pictures I'm using are from my experiences going to Western North Carolina where rhododendrons everywhere um, to visit family, to go on hikes, it's just a coincidence that they appear there because I've taken pictures of them a lot. Um, could you talk specifically more about the process with watercolor and the sparkly effects that you have in your uh, in your work? Um, I, I don't use watercolor all that much, but I do use water to disperse aerosol. And so uh, I think the effect that water and spray paint has together is, is um, revealing what I want to convey about, you know, cracked screens and sort of dilapidation that happens um, between the digital and the analog world. Um, so Deshane would like to ask, how do I paint as good as you? <laughs> I love you, Deshane. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Honestly, just throw some paint on a canvas and usually it'll be great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for coming. It means the world to me. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.